Welcome everybody. My name is Natasha Kathari. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an assistant director of admissions at Clark University. I'm going to be your host for today's session during which we're going to be discussing Clark's Career Connections Center and fifth year accelerated degree programs. This event is part of a series of webinars just for our admitted students and their families. So if you're watching this, congratulations again. I am joined tonight by four wonderful panelists. We have Michelle Flint, Director of Career Development for Career Connections Center. We have Laura Burgess, the Assistant Dean of Academic and Student Services for the School of Management. Nipurna Dakal, a junior double majoring in computer science and mathematics with a minor in data science and Luis Santos, a senior majoring in English and minoring in history with concentrations in Africana studies and Latin American and Latinx studies. Some very accomplished people on this call tonight. Thank you all for being here. As I mentioned earlier, this session will cover Clark University's Career Connections Center, as well as our accelerated degree program. To put it more broadly, we're going to be talking about how Clark prepares students for the real world through the incredible people and resources and events of the Career Connection Center and through our range of tuition-free accelerated master's programs, which just might be the best deal in higher education. Our panelists have prepared some information for you about their areas of expertise, and they're looking forward to sharing their insights. After that, we're going to answer any questions that you have. We will be using the Q&A feature of Zoom to help us keep your questions organized. So if you have questions for our panelists, please submit them using the Q&A feature. After you submit your question, you might not see it right away. Uh, in order to ensure that as many audience members as possible can get their questions answered, we're gonna be queuing them up one at a time. We will answer some questions on air and some by text. Uh, since there are a lot of you tuning in right now, I do want to apologize in advance if we don't make it to your question. If we don't see it during this webinar, or if you think of other questions, definitely feel free to reach out to us at admissions at clarku.edu. All right, so we are ready to get started on the program. So first, we are going to have Michelle, Naporna, and Lewis talk with you about Clark's Career Connection Center, which is our one-stop shop for search of internships, jobs, networking opportunities or general career guidance. Michelle, take it away. Great, thank you. So good evening, everyone. Uh, as we said, my name is Michelle Flint. I'm the Director of Career Development here in the Career Connection Center. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I'm delighted to talk with you tonight. This first opening slide shows the various offices within the Career Connection Center here to serve you. That includes on-campus student employment, employer engagement, the Clark Connect alumni mentor platform, opportunity funding, and of course, career development. So we'd like to say that we're five offices in one, and this allows us to have a coordinated wraparound strategy for your career development. Next slide, please. This is a broad overview of where Clark students are about six months after graduation. You may note that we have a higher than average rate of students going on to grad school, and that's in large part because about 30% of every class takes advantage of the accelerated degree program. Next slide. A detailed look shows our students at nationally known companies across all industries, and this is just their first job. Similarly, our graduates go on to a wide range of graduate schools, law schools, and medical programs if they don't continue on to the ADP, or even if they do once finishing the ADP. So how do we accomplish that? First of all, we have amazing students. In addition, our goal is to surround you with resources and opportunities every step of the way, and that starts the summer before you come to campus. What you see here is a photo of our career lab where students can drop in every weekday afternoon to have their resume, uh, their cover letter, or their LinkedIn profile critiqued. But the lab is also operating virtually and we will be reaching out to you, the incoming class, roughly late June to start getting your materials ready for on-campus job application process or community volunteering positions, whatever you may need once you get to campus. 
And as you can see from this Instagram image, we also offer programming and advising to help you find and thrive in on-campus jobs. From there, we offer individual career advising, weekly career events, direct connections to alumni mentors, employers, and on-demand career resources. As I said, our goal is to surround you with resources and opportunities every step of the way. And this is a screenshot from our early April events calendar. And you can see there's something every week. One thing we've done this year in response to the pandemic is to host virtual career fairs, which in turn have allowed us to pull in alumni guest speakers from all over the globe to talk about career paths and internship opportunities. Here you can see, sorry about that, one last line. Here you can see uh, one example from the recent STEM career fair. Our office is very responsive to local trends. For example, plugging into the local boom in biotech industries and in responding to the pandemic and, and other local and national trends in our programming. In addition to responding to trends, we also deliver programming specific to the career needs and of our students based on their majors and their passions. Here's a couple of examples. Thank you. Go ahead. One of our top goals is to get students thinking proactively about life after Clark, especially sophomore and junior years. To that end, one of our signature programs is our annual Life After Clark Conference, which grew to four days this year, our biggest yet. Life After Clark is an opportunity for juniors and seniors especially to network, to explore career opp opportunities, to learn career management skills, and to build professional presence for their job or grad school application process. So here I want to call out the Clark Connect platform, which is one of our most powerful career tools here at Clark. Clark Connect is important because we know that your professional network is one of the most important resources you have to grow your career after graduation. Clark Connect's basically LinkedIn for Clarkies, and it's designed around one goal to grow your network of alumni mentors, networking opportunities, and alumni sponsored career opportunities. Launched only three years ago, we've already had over 4,000 alumni mentors opt in and have hosted over 500 alumni sponsored job and internship opportunities on the platform. In addition to Clark Connect being a place to find alumni mentors and opportunities, we host an annual alumni job shadow program on the platform where students can spend a day shadowing an alum over winter break or career exploration and networking. And all this support means that no matter what your interests and talents, designing a great career after Clark is not as heavy a lift as it may seem. So uh, please, we do invite you to follow us starting now on social media to see all that we're doing, um, both for students and families out there. And with that, I'd like to introduce two of the students who have taken advantage of our services in the past year. And they're gonna tell you a little bit about what they've done and, and the benefit to them and their careers. And I believe we're starting with Lewis. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Lewis. I'm uh, currently a senior at Clark and I'm actually honored to be here to speak to you guys about my experiences uh, and to put into, co into context as well, some of the information that we just covered. Um, so my major is English with a minor in history and a concentration uh, in Africana studies and Latin American and Latino studies. Uh, my time, I came into Clark as a transfer student. Um, I had the intention of having uh, a, a flexible, uh, the, and diverse uh, correct, uh, coursework. So that was my intention coming to Clark to have that flexibility in taking all these, these courses, uh, which also uh, to develop certain skills and as well, uh, which contributed to uh, my 
job search uh, this year because this is my last semester. So um, the Career Connection Center for me has been really in instrumental uh, in my professional and personal experiences. Uh, when I began, uh, I began attending uh, the Career C Center events uh, when I, uh, during my first semester, I didn't have like a, a plan originally. I just attended these events. Uh, a lot of these uh, events uh, have free resources. So I took advantage of those resources and I made the most of uh, that experience. Uh, in uh, attending these events, uh, I managed to learn a lot about what it means to be a professional, but also uh, how to network with people. Um, and one of the things that I, I also wanna add to that is, uh, even though we have like this wonderful staff at the CCC, uh, to also for students and pr prospective students uh, to connect with their professors and faculty, because that could also lead to networking opportunities and research opportunities as well. Um, currently, I'm just a brief overview of what I'm currently doing. Uh, I'm currently a, a research assistant for, for a professor uh, in the English department. I'm also the news editor for the Scarlet newspaper. Um, so out of that, we cover student voices. Now, and, and another reason why I'm, I'm glad to be here as well to, to speak to you guys about my experiences. Um, and specifically with the CCC, um, some of the things that I did uh, during my time at Clark, I took advantage of the sh job shadow program. Um, so I did job shadow for certain uh, teaching uh, opportunities uh, and that I did that last year. I also uh, did several academic internships uh, through the uh, Clark, uh, uh, through the CCC as well. Um, and that it involves research, but also doing an internship um, as you, uh, as I went along. Um, and uh, additionally, uh, personally, the Life After Clark event has helped me a lot, which was earlier like this year, uh, that prepared me a lot in um, how to, to go through the interview process. Uh, and currently I, I have several job offers uh, and some of them are in the AmeriCorps uh, AmeriCorps organization. Uh, so, so yeah, I have that after I graduate. So I'm glad for that. Um, so yeah, um, uh, and one of the last things that I, want, I do wanna say is that uh, for, for students or for students coming at Clark is that uh, to make the most of the experience, take advantage of those resources uh, that are there. Um, and just to be aware that everyone's path to college is different. There's no linear way. There's no linear path at, to college. Uh, and that should be reflective of everyone's own journey and experiences. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for that. Thank you. Sure, uh, <clears throat> I'll take over. Uh, hi guys, I am Nipurna Nikal. I am originally from Nepal. I'm an international student here in the US. So uh, like Natasha mentioned, I am double majoring in computer science and mathematics, and I am also minoring in data science. So uh, I first got to know about the Clark Connection Center from my freshman year. So I, um, I just came in new. I wanted to look for an on-campus job and also wanted to review my resume. So uh, I got to know about the Clark Connection Center and uh, I straight, uh, I went to their website and they had, a, uh, they had a whole schedule that I can book my appointment with. And I booked my appointment and uh, the people there, uh, I don't, uh, uh, people there were like super sweet. Uh, I don't remember who that was uh, at the while because it was just two weeks that I came in, but um, she was super sweet. She told me the fixes in my resume and also told me about Handshake, which is um, which is also a platform where you can find on-campus job where uh, also internships uh, and all. And so uh, one of my big, uh, the biggest uh, help that I've received from the Career Connection Center was over last summer. I 
I got an internship at, um, at a research organization based on Harvard University at uh, called Harvard Humanitarian Initiative. So I, I was hired there as a computer science intern. Uh, so I was hired there to create a, a COVID-19 response simulator, which could visualize how the COVID-19 pandemic was spreading and how what different measures could be done to prevent it. And um, so, uh, but uh, unfortunately that internship was unpaid. And uh, I was looking through uh, funding and I, I figured out that the Clark, uh, uh, Clark Connection Center was um, provided summer funding for, uh, for people who, uh, for students who have received an unpaid internship or an internship above a certain, uh, below a certain limit. And uh, there are a bunch of, uh, there were about like 10, 15 funding opportunities. And I was in a dilemma of what internship funding should I use? And after that, I, again, I reached out to the uh, to Clark Connection Center. I, uh, I got a, um, I, uh, I set up a meeting with Tony Armstrong. She, she used to work at Career Connection Center before she was super sweet. She told me about what internships that, uh, what funding that I need to apply to. So she, rec as, as the, um, as I had a connection at, at the place, so that, that, um, that was a Clark connection. She, she was a Clark alum who was my supervisor. So uh, she recommended me to apply to Clark Connect summer funding. Uh, the funding, uh, and she told me, uh, and she, um, she told me to reach out to Michelle. And I reached out to Michelle and uh, she told me about uh, the application process and she sent me a link for the application process. The application process was not, uh, Long at all, uh, long at all. Like you just, they just, the application. You just have to fill about what you're gonna do and what your goal was and what your future goal was and what are what are the takeaways that you would be taking away from the internship, and so um, taking away from the internship. And uh, I applied. It was I applied and I also got the funding, which really helped me over the summer. It, it helped me, uh, so um, I, since it was a computer science, uh, uh, computer science internship, I had to buy a new laptop, which, um, which was really, which was one of the things I did from the funding. And um, yeah, overall, the experience with Clark Connection Center was really extraordinary. I, I really loved, loved everything about them. And um, so, I would definitely recommend uh, the incoming students to uh, for to uh, stay in, in touch with Clark Connection Center because not only will uh, you can get on-campus jobs, but you can also grab a lot of connections, which will be really vital for your next step after college. Yeah. Well, folks, you heard it here first. If you are willing to ask for help, help is always available at Clark. Uh, Michelle, Lewis, and Napurna, thank you so much for sharing all your insights and your experiences with us. Uh, in my opinion, the Career Connection Center is like the all-inclusive resort of career centers. Uh, no matter what kind of support you're looking for, you can find it there. So thanks again for sharing about that. Next, we're going to be talking about another thing that Clark does really well, and that's value. Our accelerated degree program, which is also called fifth year, offers Clark students a path to a master's degree in just one additional year and usually without paying any tuition. This is an unusual program. We're one of only a few institutions in the United States to offer such a thing in the first place. And we offer the most extensive options by far. As you can see here, 14 of our 18 fifth year programs are tuition free and they are going to be the focus of our conversation tonight. The best news about fifth year, this is an option for all Clarkies. If you study here for four years, if you earn good grades, complete any necessary prere prerequisite coursework and meet with an advisor, you could be one of the one in three Clarkies earning a master's degree in just one additional year. So this is a really popular program. And they're great programs too. Our Master's of Arts in Teaching is the top MAT program in Massachusetts. 
Our geographic information science program is part of our graduate school of geography, which is one of the top geography programs in the world. And our internationally ranked school of management is home to our tuition free management program, as well as partial tuition programs in accounting, business analytics, finance, and marketing. So lots and lots of really amazing options. And as it so happens, Dean Burgess is the program advisor for all of the School of Management fifth year programs. She's here to give you a little bit more info about the accelerated degree program in general, as well as the specific School of Management programs and to share some great advice. Great, thank you so much, Natasha and Lewis and Naparna. You did a wonderful job. Thank you so much for sharing your experiences. Um, I gave Natasha the warning that the past few weeks um, of my professional life have basically revolved around the accelerated degree because the May 1st is the deadline for our juniors who are applying. Um, so this is pretty much all I've talked about for a few weeks with many students. Um, I do want to point out all the programs that we listed on the previous slide. Um, those have certainly grown since I started at Clark about 14 years ago. Um, we have expanded our options for the accelerated degree as we've added some new graduate programs. Um, and I noticed there had been a question about the Becker programs and that um, program and, you know, is taking on the school is still very new. And I can't say what will come of that, but I can say we definitely continue to grow our accelerated degree options. Um, so when it comes to choosing an accelerated degree program, um, there's lots of different options for students and lots of different ways that they can approach it. Um, I very much encourage students to begin this conversation um, from year one, if they're interested in doing an accelerated degree. Um, they may choose to tailor their undergraduate studies a certain way um, based on that, um, you know, choosing to major or minor in a certain area if they know they might focus in another area at the graduate level. Um, some students choose the accelerated degree as um, a continuation of what they studied as an undergraduate and um, perhaps they, for example, majored in um, a business management area and are continuing on in the School of Management um, or majored in international development or history and are continuing on in that area. And by doing so, they dive into these programs um, much more in depth and usually in a more applied way than they did at the undergraduate level. Um, or some people choose programs to complement their undergraduate studies. Um, a psychology major may choose to pursue a master's in marketing to really blend those two programs. Um, so there's a lot of different options and ways to go about choosing a program. The accelerated degree program requires that students apply in the second semester of their junior year. I will say, um, I really, as someone who advises all the School of Management accelerated degree students, I really do hope I meet with applicants before the second semester of their junior year so I can begin to um, discuss their program options with them early. Um, so while students are often weighing different program options and they have to decide during that time, they really should be having these conversations with program advisors earlier on. Um, and the reason for that is that there are different admissions requirements for different programs. Some of our programs have different GPA requirements. Um, the starting foundation for all of the accelerated degree programs is a 3.4 sophomore junior year cumulative GPA. Um, so the first year is a grace period. We understand um, you know, college is new for so many students, adapting to the academic rigors, being away from home for the first time, there can be an adjustment period. And so we start the GPA eligibility at sophomore year because we don't want a student to lose out on such an amazing opportunity because they had a rough first semester at Clark. Some of the programs do have a higher GPA than a 3.4 though. Um, so that's why we want students to start planning early. Um, some of the programs have different prerequisites in place. And so these are classes that students really need to take before their senior year because 
having a background in that subject area is necessary to be successful in the introductory graduate courses they'll start taking senior year. Um, so again, having that conversation early so you can work these one or two prerequisites into your undergraduate studies is important. Some of the programs um, require that if a student will be doing the accelerated degree um, in that area that they've majored in that area and are completing an honors thesis, um, which is something that you'll talk about and decide with your advisor during your junior year. Um, so there's all sorts of um, you know, different eligibility requirements that go into these programs. Um, the application process itself is fairly straightforward, but it does require some time, some recommendations, some essays. Um, so again, the earlier students start um, having these discussions, the better they can plan for it. Um, we are used to working with students at Clark who are trying to fit in a lot into their four years. As you heard from Lewis and Napurna, I would say, and all of the things that they are involved in, um, Clark students really like to accomplish a lot during their time. And that's another part of the advising piece is having that conversation with students on, you know, what are your academic goals during your time at Clark? Um, and how can we help you fit all of these in? So I usually meet with students early on and we're talking about their interest in um, studying abroad during their time at Clark, completing both a major and a minor and a concentration um, and doing the accelerated degree. So that does sometimes take some planning on how can we fit this all in. Um, so that's all part of the you know, earlier advising process. Students always apply in that second semester of their junior year and they find out um, in the summer, usually after the completion of their junior year. Um, and then they get started in courses in graduate courses in their senior year if they are accepted. That is what makes it an accelerated degree. Um, so that's also where the pre-program advising comes into play um, to make sure students have planned accordingly and they have room in their senior year to fit in some graduate courses. Um, go ahead to the next slide, Natasha, because I think I have the examples there. So I wanted to provide um, a bit of an example of a course of study of a student who's completing the Master's of Science and Management. And so this is um, a real example of a student. So in this case, the student was completing two graduate courses in his senior year. So he took um, two what we consider introductory graduate courses, our financial accounting course and the responsible management in a global economy course, along with the remainder of his undergraduate requirements, his major requirements, program of liberal studies, um, and just other electives to round it out. Um, over the summer, sometimes a student could do optional summer coursework. It's not always required though. And so in this case, the student didn't. Um, and then he completed an internship at National Grid. And then he returned in the fifth year um, and had a full-time graduate course load of four courses each summer, um, completing both the required courses in our MS in management along with electives in areas like project management, corporate social responsibility and leading change. Um, so it's being able to get started in these graduate courses in a student's senior year that really helps someone complete a master's degree in that fifth year um, in a reasonable way. We also want students to be able to get the most of their graduate courses and not be just fitting in, you know, five grad courses a semester. Um, we want them to have the chance to really engage with the material, interact with faculty and get the most of the experience. And so that's why they'll go ahead and get started in senior year. Go ahead to the next slide. Um, I did want to also point out options for alumni graduate scholarships because a common question I get in the advising process is, I'm interested in the accelerated degree, but I may want to work for a couple of years, um, you know, in between. And so I know this seems like a very long way away for a lot of students who are still in high school. 
Um, but a benefit of being an undergraduate at Clark um, are there is that there's some great Clarky graduate scholarships. So we do offer a variety of alumni scholarships for students who return to Clark for their graduate degree. Um, even a few years after graduation. So if the accelerated degree may not be the right fit for you at that time, there's still great opportunities to come back to Clark in some way and get a graduate degree. Can you go ahead to the next slide? Um, so what I also wanted to do was just give a few examples of where our gra accelerated graduate students have gone to. Um, these are all examples of students that graduated um, in 2020 in the, during the pandemic, um, but we certainly did have some great success rates of students graduating during that time and finding job opportunities. Um, Michelle and Louis and Napurna talked a lot about the Career Connection Center. One other um, perk of the accelerated degree is that a lot of the graduate departments, um, including School of Management, School of Professional Studies and IDCE also have graduate career advising for graduate students. So students really benefit, they work with the undergraduate career advising during their four years. And then when they become a graduate student in the accelerated degree program, they get even more focused and specialized career advising through that program. Um, so there is certainly not a lack of help and resources along the way. Um, and I used examples of School of Management students just because those are the students I work with. Um, but the programs can really be tailored to fit um, you know, student interests and the different professional outcomes. And for a few of these students, these programs um, the job opportunities came along as a result of internships as well. They were interning um, at organizations like Aetna and Calm Creative, and those led to job offers for these students. Um, and most of the accelerated degree programs encourage, if not require, internships as part of their graduate studies as well. So it's really important we know students um, are focusing on graduate studies, completing that in a certain timeline, but we also want to ensure that students are still getting some professional experience to complement, um, you know, the multiple degrees that they'll have when they leave Clark. And I think that's it for my end. I'll turn it back over to you, Natasha. It is. Thank you so much, Dean Burgess, for sharing a bit about the School of Management specific uh, accelerated degree programs, as well as kind of generally what doing a fifth year at Clark might look like. That's super, super helpful. And thank you also to Michelle, Napurna, and Lewis for sharing your experiences earlier. Uh, for those of you who are tuning in, we are now going to answer your questions. We've been doing that behind the scenes for a little bit, but now we're going to be doing it out loud. So feel free to post your questions in the Q&A section if you haven't done so already. All right. And I see that we already have a couple to get us started. Uh, we have one here about the fifth year teaching program. So Dean Burgess, you can decide if you'd like to take this or if you'd like me to take this. Uh, but the question is, does it only prepare someone to teach in Massachusetts or can someone work to get certified in another state? Um, I would want to leave the final say for this on someone in the education department, but I can say um, all of our graduate programs that prepare students for certification, so the master's in teaching, I know in our department, the master's in accounting is in line with CPA requirements. Um, the focus is making sure it's in line with Massachusetts um, licensure requirements, um, which are usually held to very high standards. Um, and reciprocal in a lot of other states, um, which is a good thing, but I would want to have the student connect with the education department to really confirm, you know, specific states. And from what I know, Dean Burgess, that is absolutely correct, that uh, Massachusetts has reciprocity with 40 something different states in the United States. So while you may have to uh, fulfill other requirements to meet lic licensure agreements for a specific state, if you choose to teach there, the MIT program will absolutely prepare you to teach in any state. 
Uh, so that's a really great question. And then we had some questions that were answered behind the scenes that I think are definitely worth repeating, um, just because I think that a lot of people tuning in might be able to benefit from them. Uh, one question is about when to start thinking about on-campus jobs. When should students begin expressing interest in on-campus jobs for the fall semester? Is there an application deadline? And I see, Lewis, you already tuned in. Do you mind sharing some of your insight out loud? Sure. Um, so yeah, um, this kind of relates to what I was saying before, like that there's no uh, linear uh, I plan or path when you go along uh, in your journey at Clark. So I guess um, usually like during students, a student's first semester, um, a lot of students at Clark, they start by joining uh, on-campus clubs or you may prefer instead to volunteer or to, or if you really want an, uh, an internship, then you can then, uh, and if you need help finding an internship, then you can then uh, contact the CC, uh, uh, the, the CCC uh, to make that happen. Um, so there, there's a lot of options for students. Um, and I see this as a good thing because basically you're like a blank slate and there's a lot of options and opportunities out there that are there. Um, you just need to be able to to have access to those things. And uh, maybe you need uh, some guidance to, to be able to get to a certain place uh, that you want to be at. So it really depends um, on your interest and what you wanna do uh, in making the most of your experience at Clark. Um, but I did say that um, for this question, I said that uh, on-campus jobs specifically uh, are posted on the on a handshake app. Uh, I do remember that they there was a different platform, but I think for for based on what I know, like the I saw and and the those jobs are posted on the on the handshake app. So so yeah. Great, and and if I may just add a few uh, details on that. Thanks, Lewis. Um, so if, if you as an incoming student are interested in an on-campus job for this fall semester, uh, we highly recommend that you start paying attention to Handshake about mid-July. Um, and uh, have our career lab review your resume, make sure that the best that you have to offer really jumps off the page. Uh, learn how to write a compelling cover letter because um, we, we do typically have more applicants for each spot then, then we can accept across campus. Um, so, so get your resume reviewed in July, start looking in mid-July. Late July to early August is when those postings peak. By the time you get to campus, a lot of them will be filled or interviewing. So you really wanna look before you even get here. That's very easy to do virtually. Um, and if you are not sure what to apply to, you can book an advising session virtually and we can help you figure out where you should be applying as a first year, where you have the best chance of, of getting accepted as a first year. Um, so timeline wise, think about applying before a semester starts for a given semester. Thank you, Lewis and Michelle for sharing that insight. And Michelle, while I have you, uh, we do actually have another question about Handshake. Uh, mm -hmm. How does a student access the Handshake app if they're committed to Clark? Right, so um, Handshake shakes hands with Clark's data every night. Um, so once you deposit and are officially a Clarkie, then within a couple of days, you have access to all of the um, password protected services at Clark, and that includes Handshake. Um, so you'll have a Handshake account uh, shortly after you deposit. Um, and there's a filter specifically for on-campus jobs, and you can reach out to us from that point on for support in, in how to use it. But that's the answer to your question. Thank you for that, Michelle. Mm -hmm. I did want to add something. Um, uh, for the on-campus jobs, personally, I know that those jobs are very competitive. So I definitely, I echo what Michelle said. <laughs> definitely, if you're that 
set on getting an, an on-campus job, just be prepared and do the work to, to actually, you know, to go through that process uh, as uh, not just as a student, but as a professional. I think um, as you, that's something to think about in, in just going along your, your beginning your college career, uh, just to also think in terms of, okay, like what can I get out of this? But, as a, but also what type of professional do you wanna become? So that's something to think about as well. That's a great point, Lewis, that this isn't just about the destination of getting a job. It's also about that journey to the job. What do you learn about yourself through the process? So thank you for sharing that. Next, I have a question for Dean Burgess about experiential opportunities and the fifth year. Uh, so how does the fifth year program align with experiences like internships, co-ops, and research opportunities? Great, yes. So, <clears throat> I started to mention to this, um, but the different accelerated degree options work this in in a variety of ways. Um, a lot of programs build in a requirement in some way that students complete some type of internship experience um, or co-op during their time in the program. Um, and, and this is part of the master's degree requirements. And so very often too, even if a student completed a couple of internships as an undergraduate, they're still expected to continue on with that as a graduate student and really have that internship tie into now what their graduate degree is in, both in kind of subject matter and knowledge, but also of expectations. Um, these students are now master's degree students. So we want them to be getting that professional experience that's a bit at a higher level. A lot of um, the programs also offer what we call experiential learning courses. A lot of our graduate programs have courses that build in um, projects with outside organizations and companies. And so um, sometimes the scope and focus of an entire class project or at least a significant assignment is working with an outside organization. Um, and this gives students a great opportunity to both build up their professional skill set and their network and contacts, um, and also continue to um, you know, complete projects and work that they can add to their resume. Um, just because it is not a formal internship doesn't mean um, a consulting project a student did for a class is not a significant experience that should be added there. Um, and then definitely some classes, um, some programs have this experiential education built in um, to make sure students are meeting licensing requirements. You cannot get a master's in teaching without significant um, in-classroom experience. And I know that program is even set up so that the classes typically meet in the late afternoon and evenings to ensure that the students have their daytimes free to be in the local schools and working with the teachers and the kids um, as they progress through that master's degree program. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Dean Burgess. And next, I have a question that, let's see, I think I'll pose to both Naparna and Michelle. Uh, this question is about resumes for incoming first years. How detailed should these be? So I guess first for Naparna, maybe your perspective, the first time you had to write a resume in college, what did that look like? And then Michelle, if you don't mind jumping in with a little bit of general advice. Uh, yeah, so I was, when I came in, I was pretty Sorry, uh, was that? Oh, uh, I think we lost sound for a minute, but I can hear you now. I'm sorry. Yeah, does it? Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, okay, perfect. Uh, so, uh, yeah, as I said, uh, while, while coming in, and I didn't have any relevant experience towards computer science or towards what, uh, what uh, I was planning on doing after college. So, and also, I didn't even have experience working, like uh, doing any other jobs, uh, doing any other jobs. So I, I mainly mentioned about my volunteering experience that I had done. And also, I think, uh, I think the incoming students should do the same all, uh, and also include any work relevant experience, but also include the volunteering experience that you have done, the extracurricular activities that you've done um, throughout your high school lifetime or even throughout your school lifetime, and also some achievements that 
uh, you've made, if you've uh, done any essay competitions or any other competitions, if you um, so mention about it, show that you've, uh, you're engaging and yeah, so I think that will definitely get you uh, get you going for the first time. Thank you. Uh, and what I would add to that is um, on the Career Connection Center website, which is connections.clarku.edu, there is a resources page. And on the resources page is a resume template for incoming first years with, uh, with instructions. And so if you download that, it's a Word document, you can type right into it. It's going to guide you to give us the level of detail that you typically need. Um, and take care of all the formatting for you. And, and then you're going to be 80% of the way there if you just follow the, the template. And then you can submit it on Handshake to have it, you know, polished a little bit. Um, so, but I, I would echo everything the Perna says. Even if you, uh, sometimes your most relevant experience is unpaid and that's perfectly fine. Um, so you just want to highlight what is relevant and useful for the job for which you are applying. Thank you both so much for sharing that insight. And for those of you curious to check out the Career Connection Center website, I did post that link in the chat. So just copy and paste that into your browser. Uh, we have time for just a couple more questions. And this next one goes to Dean Burgess. And this is about minimum GPA requirements to be accepted to the fifth year master's program. Yes. Um, so for most programs, the minimum GPA is a sophomore junior cumulative GPA of a 3.4. Um, and for those of you not familiar with that numerical grading scale, a B plus is a 3.3. So that kind of gives you an idea. And that's cumulative between those four semesters. So maybe a student had a harder semester and dipped below a little in the spring of their sophomore year, but then did fantastic in fall of their junior year. What happens is all of the grades from those four academic semesters get averaged out. Now, a few programs do have higher GPAs um, because they may be more competitive to get into or simply more challenging. And there is that higher expectation, um, but the 3.4 is sort of the starting point for all programs. Thank you for sharing that, Dean Burgess. And for our final question, this is one of my favorite things to ask during these events. Um, I'm going to ask all four of our panelists, uh, can you tell me something that you love about Clark? And anyone can go first. I'll go ahead and get started. Um, it is so cliche, but the students, um, and for me specifically, the international students I work with. I'm someone who um, loves traveling, loves learning about different life experiences and cultures, but I didn't have the opportunity to do as much traveling throughout my lifetime um, as I would have liked. And so my time working with the students from all over the world at Clark has sort of given me that experience. And and getting to know them, um, learning about how they grew up, their work experiences, their families, um, and it's just added so much value to my life. I can go. So yeah, um, I think for me, what has been, what surprised me most, like uh, when I first came to Clark was that, uh, Clark has this a special connection to the Western community. And I think for me, that has been a game changer just because there's so many opportunities like in, in Western, not just at Clark, but also in, in the Western community as well. So I think that's something that I really uh, appreciated while I, I was li uh, living on campus. Uh, but also I think Clarkies overall, uh, they they're ambitious and they 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 all have uh, they take on more than I guess your typical average student. Uh, so definitely everyone is on their own journey. Everyone is taking on different things, uh, tackling different projects. So I think that's that for me enriched my experiences at Clark. So I think yeah, I found that enjoyable. So. 
I'm going to build on what uh, Dean Burgess and Lewis said. The, the students here are amazing. You know, everyone here is up to something. Everyone here is pursuing a passion. No one's just putting their time in because they're supposed to go to college. And that's what I love about meeting students and working with students and advising students here. They, they have passions, they care about the world, they care about you know, their academics and they, and they wanna know how to build from there. And it's just such a pleasure working with folks like that. All right, Napurna, what do you love about Clark? Uh, yeah, so uh, Clark has been a great journey. I, I really love, uh, so after I came, I thought I was kind of hesitant because it was the first time uh, me going to college and also me interacting with a lot of people in the United States. So I really was kind of afraid when I came in, but the, after knowing the people here at Clark and also the department faculty, I was like, uh, this place, I really, I, I started loving Clark since the first month and it's throughout the three years, it's been a really real pleasure. Like uh, any incoming students, I would, uh, you guys will have a great, great time. Uh, in terms of academics as well, and also in terms of extracurricular or any other opportunities at Clark. Thank you all for sharing that. I'll just quickly jump in to share one thing that I really love about Clark, which is that, I think that this is a place full of care and that takes a lot of different forms. So like Michelle said, you know, this is a place where people really kind of dig into their different passions, but this is also a place where I think people care about the community, whether that's, you know, their fellow students or, uh, you know, caring about their, you know, greater Worcester community, the neighborhood, everything. Um, they're just, so many ways that this community expresses the ways in which they look out for each other and beyond campus. So I really appreciate that. Um, thank you all again for sharing your experiences with everyone tuning in. And to those of you who are joining us tonight, thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about something that we think makes Clark really, really special, which is what happens after Clark. To our admitted students and our families, we do hope to welcome you to the Clark community. And we understand some of you are still weighing your options. So just a reminder that May 1st is our deposit deadline. Uh, you do have a few days to decide to become a member of next year's class, and we would love to have you. And if you'd like to continue to learn about Clark, remember the fun doesn't have to stop here. This Thursday, April 29th, uh, you can join us at 7 p.m. Eastern time for a webinar on, on Clark's uh, capstone requirement, which I know Dean Burgess had mentioned in brief. And then on Friday, April 30th at 7 Eastern time, we're going to be inviting you all to our ever popular Ask a Clarky event, which is a chance to ask current students whatever you want. As always, if you have any more questions for us, or even if you just want to say hi, feel free to email us at admissions at clarku.edu. Again, thank you all for tuning in. We had so much fun answering your questions, and we hope to welcome you to our class of 2025. Until next time, take care. <laughs>